Good evening to all the BFA families and students. I am Brett Blanchard, the principal of BFA, and joining me tonight is Lisa DeRocher, the assistant director of the Northwest Career and Technical Center. Hi, as Brett said, I'm Lisa DeRocher, and our director is Leanne Wright, who cannot be here with us tonight. And we are all sending her and her family our thoughts and condolences. Brett? And also behind the scenes is Mr. Matt Bloom and he'll be taking some of the questions online and helping us with that. So before we begin, really the purpose of tonight is we have quite a bit to go over because even though we've sent information out, we think it really helpful to try to go over as much as we can, then send material home tomorrow. However, people have asked me, can I just say maybe seconds about who I am? I will share seven sentences on an assignment I actually gave all the teachers last week, and that was to create a brief bio that we will put up throughout the school. So my one-page bio before we go on to really important stuff happens to be this is my 34th year in education, and for me, the most important thing, the reason I love my job and I'm thrilled to be here is that I like to maximize student potential is really what it's about. I'm the proud father of three amazing kids, Britton, who lives nearby, Ariana, who's in Poughkeepsie, and my youngest son, Chase. He is going to school outside Philadelphia. My wife, LP, is a former nuclear engineer, used to teach nuclear physics to the, um, in the Portsmouth submarine base, and she currently teaches high school science and math along with my two Kene Corso Mastiffs, Ragnar and Ivar. I have a cat who showed up 15 years ago. The cat will outlive all of us besides family. My other passions include just some endurance events and really I enjoy reading about history as I used to teach it. And I've been a New Englander for more than 50 years and my family's been in Vermont since actually the mid 1700s. Enough about me. We will now go on to the actual reason people are here, and that is to take a look at where we are. So just briefly, even though I sent some of this home, I think it's important to understand how did we make decisions this summer, how is the schedule created, and what are we after with everything that we do. So first three guiding principles, first and foremost happens to be the safety of the students, community, families, and that family happens to include our staff here. The social emotional well-being of students, especially being gone nearly six months school, those two we see together, and the third is flexibility within a structure. The basis of the action, so what did we learn from the spring? I appreciate the conversations parents have had with me, staff, students also. It was Really a pleasure to be able to meet with students. I think the last five weeks or so, many came in to the building. We followed physical distancing, we did all that and learned quite a bit. One, uniformity is important. Two, we should have consistent contact with students. Attendance and engagement are needed throughout the week. We have to have that flexibility within the structure given today's really brand new educational world, which happens to be, we could be in one of three areas. We could be fully virtual, we are currently in hybrid, and all of us hope for fully in person. Lastly, and I really think it's important to state, I think the spring showed us that teachers are really irreplaceable. Now, as to the schedule, we'll take a look at both the BFA schedule and the Northwest Career and Technical Center and give you some examples. So the schedule has students in class five days a week. So if there's anything I really need to score, really need to highlight, so this is the question that keeps coming up. What are we doing 
on the days we're not in person? And the answer is you are still in class. So we had to divide the students up as closely as we could to 50% in order to make safety, movement, and all of that work as best as we're able. So we have the blue group meets Monday and Tuesday in person. We have the schedule, we actually have it online. I will make sure it gets resent out tom tomorrow, excuse me. And we start the day at 745. So really important people realize the doors will not open until 745 with the exception of those students that are arriving by bus. In which case we have three major areas that we're gonna ask students to go into and waiting till 745. We'll go over some more details later about the entrance into the school. I won't go over every single detail because you can see it. And again, I'll send it out online. But the days you're in person, you can see 80 minute classes. We'll go over what learning in a hybrid model looks like. We have Wednesday. And while Wednesday needed to be designated as a largely a cleaning day, we still are doing virtual connection with all students. It allows teachers for 30 minutes to be able to get their whole class together or post an assignment to get that class on Wednesday to make sure that we have a continuity of learning. And then when we go into Thursdays, we have green in person, blue connects live on that day, on that time, and we are taking attendance. The purpose of attendance is not just to see who actually shows up that, at that point. We need to see who's engaged. So the class may run 30 minutes live, depending. It may go 80 minutes. And there's a real important reason for flexibility. And we'll take a look at that when we look at the hybrid learning model. So advisory also runs five days a week. We'll have a slight adjustment because we just turned this into a PDF for easy viewing on the screen. Lunches will be done in one of kind of two cohorts. And you can see on the bottom, because we're very aware of, of lining up with the Northwest Career and Technical Center, juniors and seniors, we do everything by advisories to make sure we have small groups of which they will eat in the classroom, in the advisory room. And we have a whole way that we have the breakfast and lunch program worked out because they will be offered all five days and then group B, freshmen and sophomores. Wednesday is actually a key day, and the reason I think that needs to be kind of a sacred day and not a day that people are looking at, that they can go do other things, it is really a time where the students can connect directly with their teacher. They may do it in person, so to speak, virtual one-on-one. -on -one. They can do it in small group, and we'll explain how this can also connect to some advanced placement learning. So there's a lot more I could go over here, but I think it's best now to take a look. Dean, we'll go to the next one. We will have Mrs. DeRocher take a look at the Northwest Career and Technical Center, and you will see that they largely line up. And that's really important. Again, this schedule works in all three steps, fully virtual, hybrid, or best case scenario, fully in person. Mrs. DeRocher? Yes, thank you, Brad said we really needed to closely align with BFA, but the Northwest Career and Technical Center also serves other students. We serve students from MVU, which is Missisquoi Valley Union High School, and we also serve um, homeschool students, and there are also other students from other surrounding schools who come to us because their local technical center may not have a program that they're looking for, and they'll come to us for that program that they're looking to study. So what I wanted to do is just show you a couple of differences. So Dino, if you can just keep it frozen on this particular slide. And what we wanted to mention is for those students who are in the, mo in the morning program with the technical center, you are to come directly to your technical center at 8 a.m. It does say enrichment. So you will be starting off in your technical center program for enrichment. If you do need to go to another enrichment, that procedure is going to be shared with you when you start school. Just like if you do need to go to the nurse, there's going to be a specific procedure for you to leave that classroom. So after you do your morning program, then those of you are, who are with BFA, 
then you depart and you continue on with your regular schedule. Those of you who are not with BFA, then you will leave and you will go on the bus if we are with MVU, or you will go home by other forms of transportation. Then we have the afternoon program. And the afternoon program starts around 11.25. I have to see that. Uh, that starts around 11.25, I'm correct. And that program is you, you come for that time frame, and that is period six. And then after period six, just like in the morning, the MVU students would go home on the afternoon bus. And then there's one more period at the end of the day for the BFA students. Back to Wednesday, what Brett said. This is a very important day. For those of you who remember last year, we had to pivot quickly in March. We had to pivot, we had to be remote. It was difficult for everybody and we all did our best at that time. And for a lot of us, we just checked in really quickly with our teachers and said, I'm here. Some of us never checked in. Well, this year it's going to be very different. So that Wednesday and all your other virtual days, you do need to check in with your teacher. And Wednesday is special because that's the only day that your whole class will be together and your teachers are really excited about that. So please remember that you will be logging in on Wednesdays. And just like Brett said too, we're set up the same as BFA. So if you're a blue student, you're in person Monday and Tuesday, and you learn virtually Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If you're a green student, you're in person Thursday and Friday, and you learn virtually Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Anything else to add, Brett? No, I think just to make everyone aware, we are using power, we're doing attendance virtually as we would do in person, and we'll make sure that we also alert parents for any missing students, understanding there can be many reasons for that, but we wanna make sure and really underscore this, we have five days of learning and Wednesday is a great opportunity to be able to connect, catch up, and for those students who inevitably will have some Wi-Fi issues, we're not just gonna make some allowances, want you to know that right now at the Collins Pearly Complex, we have high-speed Wi-Fi, while it's under a tent, there's two tents right now that are being set up. We also have the library, the public space to do that. We have other facilities that we have a map that we'll be sharing online. Understanding if we use Google Classroom, you're not likely to fall far behind. And if there's a paper copy needed, the first way to go is to make sure we save offline and then we can take a look at paper copies with those exceptions for those people that are still struggling with connectivity. I do want to add to what Brett was saying is with Google Classroom, is that all of the teachers, both at BFA and the Northwest Career and Technical Center, have committed to releasing a week's worth of work by Sunday evening. So new work will not be assigned throughout the week. That was feedback that we heard loud and clear from parents and students. So again, Sunday evening, you will have a syllabus posted in Google Classroom for you and your family to see what work is to be done for the week. And there will be some flexibility at BFA with that because there will be some classes of which the students virtually will be taking part directly into that where the teacher may share the screen and may give some updates on assignment. So ideally, yes, and we're also looking at that flexibility that we'll explain. One quick point, because I think actually for me it's a particular point of pride, we're one of the few schools where 100% of the teachers have come in the last two weeks in order to make sure that we're ready to go and meet student needs. So not only I think is that a really hallmark of what pride issue is here, we also have 90% plus that have chosen to come in on the hybrid rather than do virtual. So that's worth noting and I think that it really shows how much this community is committed to making sure that we get back to business and that we get back to meeting student needs. Now, learning a hybrid schedule, it's best to hear it, we'll show you, but that's why we're here to give you some examples also. For students, they'll be living it, they'll be able to follow in their classes, but we wanna give everyone out there a real kind of synopsis on what is it to learn in a hybrid model. So, the BFA and also including the Northwest Career and Technical Center understanding sometimes there's some different learning outcomes based on the programs. You saw slight variances in the schedule. 
They've been working really hard to make sure that there is an online learning community that's vibrant, engaging, and active. They're going to look forward to seeing you both in person and virtually. Again, I've mentioned that 30 to 80 minutes, it depends on the class. That's the importance of engaging and not just trying to do a quick show into the class and then remove. We will be taking a look at that engagement. Mentioned attendance already. Daily objectives are the norm, and that's nothing that is new, and Wednesday we've already spoken about. Expectations for students is to remain connected throughout that time period. Each 80-minute class, whether virtual or in person, you need to be committed to be, being able to work during that time period. Your expectation is to log into Google Classroom at the beginning of class, to engage in whatever lesson is being taught, Take ownership of the really myriad amount of learning resources that are going to be out there. Be appropriate at all times. Really what that means is if you do not wish to have your video camera live, it's a simple process of using an avatar that's actually your face or your picture. Um, not too much to ask, just to make sure everyone can see you. And then, as you should probably know, just attire, language, all of that is always the norm because you are in class. Two major ways to look at hybrid learning. One is a single set of objectives, which means that you are in class when you're virtual, you're actually present in that class, engaging live in what that lesson is. When you do two sets of objectives, you might have a separate online learning objective that will then sync with the in-person piece. That will make more sense as we take a look at some examples. So, the first one, if I'm teaching history, and we have a single set of objectives, we might be looking at evidence of a civilization and trying to take apart where is the civilization given the evidence. I might have groups break up, either Zoom is the easiest way, or using Google Meet. They'll engage in the material. Live, they might engage in the material. We're gonna come back as a class, share out, and then we'll take a look at doing some type of formative assessment. If I'm doing a separate set of objectives using that similar model, we would have it online engaging in material, which might be different than the in-person material. It will all sync together. And for those people wondering, what will you do when we go in person? Because you might have a lag right there. And the answer is, we're not going to go in person at the drop of a hat. We will have time to sync up learning objectives, make sure when students re-enter our building, fully that we're all set to go. So it really offers two different ways to learn, both vibrant. The teacher has that discretion because we're looking at flexibility within a set schedule. Yes, and based on what Brett just said, some of you are probably wondering, how does it work at the Northwest Career and Technical Center? How does technical education work in a pandemic where we can't be in person five days a week? Well, our faculty, are they're just amazing, and they're making it work, and they're so creative. And I just wanted to share with you a couple of creative ideas that they have. So I have here some examples of what some programs are going to do for you to look forward to. So for instance, in our human services program, the instructor is Jennifer Conrad. And you know how we talked about Wednesdays being the only day where everybody will be together? She said that on Wednesdays, you can expect guest speakers, career panels, training from community agencies, and working with early education programs. Also, they're going to be working with the Northern Lights CCV to do interactive lectures. Another example is cosmetology. I mean, you're, you're wondering, okay, how, how does that work? Well, the instructor is Ashley uh, Duncan Oban, and she is highly creative as well. So what she said is that students will focus on theory work while virtual and practical work while in person. And they'll also be using Wednesdays to come together as one group to have guest speakers, presentations, or online classes hosted by industry professionals. I have a couple more. Automotive, you're probably thinking building trades. How are they going to do it? Well, let me give you an example of automotive. Automotive, based on the hybrid schedule, will actually give you an hour more of lab time.
because of the Monday and Tuesday of that whole time, you're going to be in the lab working on vehicles. And then the virtual days, you'll be working with Mr. Vincelet, who's your instructor, and he'll be working with you on the standard book work that the second year students already know and love. And then we have another, another example, medical professions. When you're in medical professions and you start in year one and you finish year two, you can earn a total of nine college credits. So as a result, that virtual learning is very important because there's so much academics involved in it that it's getting you ready for college to where you could do a lot of that online work at home. Lastly, I'm not sure if you heard about our outdoor technology program, but that's for ninth and 10th graders. And the key word is outdoors. And that's what we need to do more of during this pandemic. So as a reminder, everybody listening tonight, please make sure that your students come prepared because in all classes throughout our entire campus, kids will be going outside. And they'll be going outside primarily for, for breaks or maybe going to um, hold class outside if the weather is, is good enough. But for outdoor technology, whether the weather, weather is cold or rainy, expect to be outside. And just to give you an idea of what they're going to cover, and then I'll be done, Brett, is um, in the first quarter, what they're going to be doing is during the virtual days, you'll be going outside of your home, identifying and mapping tree species. And you're going to be performing ecological assessments of species richness and diversity. And then you're going to be designing a landscape business model, create estimates, for a bid in Taylor Park. You will then present your bids to receive feedback from the local contractor who will actually um, perform the work that you're presenting. So there's so many more examples, but we wanted to give the community a taste of what it will be like at the Northwest Career and Technical mm -hmm. Center this year. Brett? Thanks, Lisa. And I think one of the things we saw during the spring is that a lot of the technical center's skills became even more valuable. I mean. Obviously, cosmetology is not a concern to me, but um, <laughs> it certainly became a big factor more than people had thought initially. Yes, yes. We actually did a lot of work on site. And that's when you are here Monday and Tuesday, expect full hands-on, ready to go. So before we get to safety and health updates, I want to give you also a few more specifics. So advanced placement, PE, dance, drama, music, everything that we have scheduled, we have planned to see that's done. So if you take a look at the performing arts, it will look different, meaning that we're probably going to have to use some of the Collins Pearly Complex. We might have to use the gym for some music. That is the plan. And with advanced placement, let me see if I can tackle this systematically. The first part is pre-COVID, more than half the schools in Vermont are on a semester basis. So just acknowledging that, that the schedule is not perhaps as um, different as people might think that's been going on now for quite a while. In the model, we do have semester classes. And so Wednesdays can be used or may be used as can enrichment time to either further a lesson, start a lesson, and take a look at how students may catch up. So there's flexibility in that schedule I will continue to meet with the advanced placement teachers because they've been great with taking a look at how to be creative, make things work, and still make sure that we are ready, the students are ready for those May tests. With PE, the Plex, the Collins Priority Complex, will continue to be used as a main area. And then again, there's some creativity. With music, it is so important to make sure that we have chorus and band fully going. So that is the plan. Again, it's going to look different anytime you divide up students into two different cohorts. And we plan on maintaining the schedule. So in other words, people ask, well, what about snow days? What about holidays? Right now, the plan is to make sure that Monday, Tuesday is blue, Thursday, Friday remains green, and that we keep that schedule both for continuity and I think for ease. And Brad, I do have a question. How about theater? How is that being handled? So I think it's really important to do drama and very important to do theater overall. So we are continuing to do that. It's going to look different because we may not do any musicals, at least the first semester, or at least while we are in hybrid. 
So it'll be different, but I can tell you right now with my summer conversations, our teachers are ready to go. And if you ever want to see a creative group, meet the teachers of the performing arts and you can just look for what they did in the spring. And that was fully virtual. So, and by the way, it's also an amazing accomplishment the students did not to get too off topic. Being able to do chorus recitals, being able to do really an orchestra while performing at home individually, trying to be part of a cohesive group is truly amazing. So we are far better off with everything that we're going to do than we were in the spring. Now as to the health and safety updates, because that is where the greatest amount of time has been spent. And I do have to thank Nurse Val for her amazing work about the summer and helping with the district. So it has been an incredible endeavor to try to make sure that we are ready, that we do keep up to the updates, which happen to be weekly, sometimes they're daily. So we'll go through as many as we can, understanding many of these questions are answered online. So if you look at the district page under COVID, you will see seven or eight pages of answers regarding largely safety concerns, safety issues. So let's start with the issue of just coming to school. Right now we have four entrance ways that are going to be well known. We have three automated temperature checking, temperature checking machines, and then we have two areas that will be done with actually the handheld that you can actually see on the screen. All of them are staffed, and we will make sure that we get students through in a thorough, fast manner, and that's part of the automation that actually does work well because we've been using it now all summer. We have set procedures for anyone that happens to be above that 100.4 or thereabouts that might change. Anyone around 101 and up, we have actually a very set procedure. The nurses have worked on that. They are in a large common office that's been divided so that we can put people that are not feeling well as well as deal with the more common issues which bumps, bruises, issues like that. We are maintaining all medicine, all those protocols. So some people asked about that. All of that is being situated. We are ready to go with that more precisely. Our amazing nurses are ready to go with that. Masks are mandatory. And with everything we're saying, there's always some rare exceptions, but let's just be very clear. Masks are mandatory throughout the school day. Teachers are gonna be great about offering breaks when possible. We are looking, as Lisa had said, to try to get outside. We're looking at using the Plex, that's what Mr. Vians likes to call it, for all sorts of classes whenever we're able. But I want to be very clear that that mask is out of respect for you, and then wearing a mask is out of respect for other people. Ideally, it is two-ply or better, and the state has set requirements with that. So we're ready to work with you. We have masks every day available, brand new masks, and we'll see that students have them should they forget or should they need one. And that's true, by the way, at all our facilities, both um, in the Northwest Career Technical Center and BFA. Mentioned breakfast and lunch, but I wanna say the nurses have worked closely with the pediatricians and they will remain doing so. So they've been working with the Department of Health, pediatricians, and then keeping us updated. All our staff have had uniform cleaning expectations and we've gone over how to clean a classroom between each class coming in, coming out. So those expectations are clear. We'll be reviewing those with students also, but we are confident that we have those procedures down and that we'll be in the best shape possible with that. We have water filling stations, so we really need, at the moment, at least the first week or so, we're gonna to try to provide some water bottles. Please bring your own, and we do have the filtered water stations. And one of the more difficult parts to remember, at least for me, is making sure you drink enough water. Yes, you may drink your water in class. We wanna make sure that you have those breaks. And so while we have the mask, besides at lunch, Right after lunch, we'll put them back on. We also want to really make sure that students are hydrated 
students are feeling at least generally well, understanding masks are not that fun. And we are really cognizant making sure that the day works well. And to add to that too is in terms of mask breaks, as you mentioned, it's suggested to provide mask breaks about every 20 to 25 minutes. And as for water, at the Northwest Technical Center, uh, Dino, who is behind the camera tonight, thank you, has made sure that we have water bottles available as well. So you can come by to the Career and Technical Center and grab a water bottle. Thank you, Dino. Awesome, great, Lisa. Yeah, and we also have them um, either on order or ready to go. Great. So with the issue of arrival, again, we'll have five entrances that are staffed. We are timing exits. So what we're going to do is first dismiss those students that are going to need the bus. Then we'll go to those students that need pickup and then last, but it'll be done fairly quickly, those students that are walking. We do not have extracurriculars the first few weeks. Athletics are continuing and our AD Amazing Dan Marlowe, he has done an update today as I saw him filming on the stage and he will continue to do the updates because those are coming in daily. And any schedule adjustments with athletics, please um, contact him. And the question about how will you make the decision on whether to close school or what are we doing? It is very complex, there's many factors in short, the superintendent works directly with the state health department. That who makes the, they're the ones that make the final decision, but really it could be a community issue. It could be a school issue. There are many factors and it's not possible to go every single one right now, nor would it be really helpful, but there is a process and we follow the state guidelines with that. So I think we took the majority of questions we did group them together, and there are some other topics that we will be covering. That's correct, and there is that final Maple Run Unified School District uh, at a glance calendar, the two week calendar that we still need to take a look at. Do you wanna look at that now and then go to questions? You, you know, that'd be great because we have the questions regarding that, how's the week look? How's next week look? How's the week after look? So let's just take a look at that. And again, this will be sent out and it's posted. Yes, actually what Dino is putting up here on the screen is you are going to see this published in the Messenger this weekend in the editorial section. And thank you to the Messenger. They have been publishing a lot of information on our school district every single week. It'll also appear on the Maple Run Unified School District's website under news, and it will also be pushed out to Facebook. And this will be going out tomorrow actually. So what, if this can stay frozen on here, is what you're seeing is all of the schools within the Maple Run Unified School District and how we're going to start school. And you can see we have everything from the high school, the technical center, we have Fairfield, we have early childhood programs, we have St. Albans City School, we have SATEC, and we also have the virtual academy. I'm not going to go over all of it with you, but I just wanted to out some highlights. So for instance, on September 8th, if you are a freshman or you're a family of a freshman listening in, they will come on the 8th and they will be here with us all day and they will be able to pick up their laptops that day because we do have Chromebooks for students who need those. And then on September 9th, this is really important, those of you who are in the blue group you will have the opportunity to pick up your Chromebook laptop here at BFA cafeteria between 9 and 4 p.m. If you cannot make it between 9 and 4 p.m., you can call the school and make other arrangements, but at the latest, you will get it on that following Monday when you're here in person. Now, for the green group, your first official day of school is going to be on that Thursday. You are in person live on Thursday. You will also receive your Chromebook laptop, so you will be with us Thursday and Friday. The blue group, you'll chime in with us on Thursday and Friday. However, you may or may not have your laptop, but we're going to be patient. Don't worry, we're going to get you online. Everything should start to run smoothly the following week. And then, 
the next, well, let me stay here for a moment before we go to the next week. For those of you who have children in other schools, you can see how certain things can overlap and how they match up. So for instance, if you have a child who is at BFA and you also have a child who is at SATEC, you can see that SATEC has blue group starting in person, and that's the first day. It's just to give you an example, there's a lot of information on this, on this page. And then I'm just going to ask Dino if you could page down to the second page. And here we are, we have where it shows on September 14th, that's the first day of the blue group in person. That's the first day that the 10th through 12th graders are coming on campus. All right, anything? Oh, yes. The other piece we wanted to add is the virtual academy you see on the bottom of Monday, the 14th. That is the high school virtual academy first day of online classes. And I know those of you who have chosen that option have already been in contact with guidance and you know to reach out to them if you have any more questions. Anything else? No, I actually want to thank the Counseling Center. They met or will be meeting with every family that chose the fully virtual model. And again, um, just regarding numbers that are going to come into the building, we couldn't be happier. As one teacher told me today, I can't wait to have the students in here and everything's going to be good. So that is really why we're all here. And again, that's why 100% of your teachers have shown up, worked diligently, patiently, and flexibly to see that we are ready and that we really look forward to working with students. There will be, as with any school system, some inevitable issues that we're going to work through. We are looking to have even improved communication to make sure that that goes out every week, keep people updated. Again, that Wednesday is a crucial part for students and teachers to connect. Issues with the bus, um, we have it all arranged, at least we do on paper. That will be sent out tomorrow, so the bus schedule is done. And again, that will be shared. The plan is to share that tomorrow. Thank you, Lisa. So now I will ask Dean of Students, Mr. Bloom, if there's some questions that we should handle. We've got just a couple questions. Uh, the first one is asking, um, what does a mask break look like? I'm sorry? What does a mask break look like? Oh, yeah, it's a great question because we went over that today with faculty. So it may be walking outside classes as lisa had said we are looking to try to get outside understanding we do have construction it might actually be stepping out in the hallway when no one's there to be able to take that that breath to get your um, mask off and kind of get rebalanced so we are looking at that we are keeping all safety standards when this happens and so the mask break can look like one of several things and again it could be the class goes aside momentarily we make sure people are distanced. It could be need to step out in the hallway briefly. That's also possible again. And we are looking at trying to do this on a more timely, Lisa had mentioned, you know, 25, 30 minutes. There will be no clock. We're not looking at that. We are asking students, you know, to judge themselves as best as they're able. And then we'll make allowances accordingly. Thank you, Mr. Blanchard. Uh, another question um, is in regards to Wi-Fi connectivity. Mm. How many students will be allowed at the complex as Wi-Fi is poor or unavailable where some people live? Yeah, it's a great question in terms of the actual. It does depend on the weather. So the tent is there to make sure that you could bring your Chromebook and connect. It's been tested. It works extremely well. Um, it is true high speed. In terms of actual numbers, there's not like we haven't set a cap. We need to make sure people are still physically separated. But if it's a nice day, there is an area to spread around. The second tent is going up. When I walked by the 
um, public library, they have signs there that they actually give the Wi-Fi right in the window. And that's available. And actually, to add to that, on the maplerun.org website, there is a banner at the bottom of the page called COVID-19 Resources. When you click on that, you'll see a lot of green squares. It looks like a Jeopardy board. And on one of those squares, it indicates where you can find free Wi-Fi. And it shows all around Franklin County. So that should be helpful. It's a very detailed map also. So it's very clear which areas have it. Are drop-off locations specific in the morning and the afternoon? Well, yes, we do have the drop-off location. Matter of fact, Mr. Bloom, I know you can answer that one quite clearly since you have the microphone. Right, so there will be a map going home of uh, building entrances that are broken up by alphabetical order. You may drop your student off closest to where the entrance is. Those drop-off locations will be either so, so what we'll do is because i think the easiest way to go i'm sorry to interrupt mr bloom is that we'll provide the map hopefully send that out tomorrow as the plan and we do have the five entrances but in terms of actually the major two areas that they can drop off at the north building i would say the north building uh by the sign in the south building and at the end of ferris street great so those are the locations the sign is out here in the south building? Correct. And then the north building, the entranceway, there really is only one major entranceway. We'll have staff there also. Just want to be clear. And we'll help direct students to make sure that any of that confusion we sort right out. Another question is asking about where the health check locations are. Yeah, they're actually on the map also. And the other doors are actually locked on the outside. So we have five entrances of which they're well marked in terms of like what they're called i don't know how meaningful that is but you're welcome to so we'll, that's on the map also again students walking to school are being dropped off they're going to be readily directed to the places to enter the building they will be asked to go directly to enrichment we have proficiency recovery from the spring and we have those schedules, and students will need to check power school as they're going to anyway, so the schedule, September 8th, all of that will be adjusted to make sure that students will be assigned to an enrichment and or proficiency recovery. And the reason is we want to make sure that everyone that may have had various reasons for the spring not going well, we concentrate on that as well as making sure enrichment takes place. So. We'll be doing three-week cycles with the proficiency recovery, but all that's going to be clear when they take a look at their schedules in power school, and we'll help direct people. And freshmen, you'll actually have a day to try to get familiar, and we'll have people all over to make sure that our directional signs, because we will have directional signs throughout the building, much like when you go to the grocery store, and we will be there to help that. So as much as possible, we're keeping traffic moving unidirectional, and there are some areas that we have to have both. Should you need to go to the restroom, it is just go to the nearest one. We understand that. And I did want to add something more about entrances. So the Career and Technical Center entrance at this point is only reserved for the following. Only the faculty and staff of the Career and Technical Center, the preschool students, the students who are not BFA students, like MVU, homeschool students, and also the building trade students. So those are the only students at this point that are allowed to enter through the technical center entrance. However, that may change in the future, but we'll keep you posted as things shift. And then you'll see plenty of signs with hand washing and things that you've probably seen throughout various places that you've been able to go to, at least the last couple months. A uh, question asks, um, what about when students arrive late to school if they're tardy? What's the process for that? Yeah, thanks. There's only one entrance, and that is the main entrance until we get the connector finished, which is scheduled for November. Then that will be the main entrance. For now, it is in the south building. It is what is the main entrance, and you'll put yourself right into the office, and we'll both temperature check as you're coming in, 
and also make sure that you receive a pass to be able to get to your class. Uh, question about who will be supervising students at the Plax? Oh, my screen just jumped, sorry. So as, as you take a look at the other questions, Mr. Bloom, yep. So indoors, that's an obvious answer, but we're not using much indoor except for some PE and then occasionally maybe another class or two. So we are looking to see what staff may be available up there. In some cases, much like if you go to a public library, you just need to be aware that a lot of it is making sure that you are responsible for yourself. But we are looking to put at the Plex uh, an adult or two to try to help out with that. Another question of, um, from, a, from an athlete, will there be a bus available for students that do sports to take to the complex after school? Yes, so there will be a bus. It will depart pretty soon after school. The first buses departing will be actually for the transport of home, and then we'll make sure they get to the uh, plex. Repeat of when uh, Chromebooks for blue cohort students will be? So we'll also be sending this out because we don't expect everyone to memorize what we're saying. So the blue cohort, the ones that are going to be virtual on Thursday and Friday, they'll be receiving theirs Wednesday on the 9th. And then we will have on the 10th, that's Thursday if I have it right, the green cohort, I believe, will receive their Chromebooks then. Right, the blue cohort. Um, we'll pick up their Chromebooks at the cafeteria window between 9 and 3 on September 9th. And uh, we want to be clear, I know Lisa spoke about this also. We're, we're going to be accommodating as possible. So we understand that there's just so many issues to try to work through. So we've set up a schedule to make it work and understanding we're going to have to hear from students when there are issues. That's the way we're going to find out how to correct things. If a student needs to leave midday for an appointment, does the family still need to call the attendance hotline? It's the same system as you would do in the past. The answer is yes. Um, can students who are dropped off or drive to school enter any location entrance, or are they assigned? Um, we'll make that clear coming up. So that will be sent out. There's always going to be some flexibility, and I want to be clear with that, that we understand the goal is to try to stop any large congregation, and we're making sure that as much as we can, that doesn't happen. I think some clarity for that question is that we're asking students to enter the building where their enrichment class is, and then once they're in the building, they go right to their enrichment class. So I think actually it's a very important point, thank you, that it's best to enter the building of which you're going to go into because as soon as you walk in, we will be asking you at 7.45 up to 8 o'clock to head to your enrichment or your proficiency recovery class. And based on that clarification, as you can see, things just change rapidly. So um, at one point we were hoping or we were planning on having just a certain group of students come through the door, through the technical center door. So if the technical center students are supposed to report to us, um, if you're with us in the morning program, you'll be reporting to us at 8 a.m. Perhaps you would come through that entrance. So I think we just need to talk about that. And we'll make it clear to all the families as well. Because as Brett was saying, the main goal is to relieve the congestion at the door trying to come in. Um, a, a student's looking for clarification about the first day. It states that it's a freshman day, which is Wednesday the 8th. But will blue group be in person as well? It should say Tuesday. Tuesday the 8th, Monday yeah, is the freshman day, and they're the only ones. There might be a couple of new students. I always say there's exceptions to almost everything that we say. It's just the nature of the world. So that is for freshmen. There will be some new students also. But that whole schedule has been sent out, and we will not have any other students besides freshmen and new students, incoming students, on that Tuesday the 8th. I hope that's... Clear. And so to clarify for that person asking if they are in the blue group and they are in 10th, 11th, or 12th grade, we know that that first week is going to be a little clunky for people. So it, you would need to pick up your Chromebook again on that Wednesday if you're in the blue group and then log into your email if you remember your password and then you will see a message from your teachers 
and hopefully you can join on that Thursday if you have a device, if you've already picked your Chromebook. So you can be a part of the group virtually on Thursday. But like we said, we're going to be flexible. And then by Monday, when you come in person, then you should be all set and ready to go. There's a question um, about us going one-to-one. -one. Is everybody getting Chromebooks? Yes, so we are one-to-one. -one. Just to be very specific, we will give the freshmen first some that we have. We do have a new shipment coming in, and we'll make sure the freshmen get that. But every single person has a Chromebook that's available. You may bring your own device also, but you may have a Chromebook. If you need that, you will be taking those home. So some people have asked, are they going to stay here? No, we actually need that important tool, that important device to go home with you to see that the learning continues. How are extracurriculars going to look for virtual students? For full virtual students? Yeah, extracurriculars, I kind of indicated in the beginning, there's some issues we need to work out. Part of it happens to be some state guidelines. And we also want to make sure the first three weeks, which takes us to the end of September, that really we have everything else functioning, but we are looking to get extracurriculars up and going. But there's always some issues, like the state has said we may not use the gym for its intended purpose. So open gym then becomes an issue. And there's some others, but we are looking eventually, I hope October, but there's no promise with that, to see that we do have extracurriculars going. Athletics is still being maintained. And again, that's kind of the um, area that Mr. Marlowe will be able to give us more information on. It is important to note that after school, students will be asked to leave, and that is because we do need to get the building thoroughly cleaned. We are planning each and every night. So while I like to see students around the building, I like to see them hanging out, that's not going to be possible until we can go fully in person in the guidelines there. Um, for students who are dropped off, do parents need to wait for a temp check? Um, parents will not be coming into the building, so I hope that answers the question. So the answer is no. Not for the pickup, but we, that is simply you will walk to the vehicle. Uh, a question asking about advisory size, will they be split up into smaller groups? Right now, if I had to do an average, it's about an average of 12 is what we're looking at. So we are very careful to make sure that advisory is very workable for both personalization and for lunch. I guess that's my short answer. And I did want to jump back to the question that somebody asked, do I have to stay parked waiting for my child to, be, to have a temperature check? So I'm thinking what they were asking is, oh. if my child does have a temperature and then I drive away, then they have to notify me and come back. So what we're all asking our students to do is to do a self-check at home. And there is going to be a document that Nurse Val is going to send home to all the families. And that's a, a document that says that I attest to, to checking myself each morning. Do I feel OK? Am I feeling hot? Do I need my temperature checked at home? Um, is my um, do I have uh, stomach issues? Is there something else going on? Just to do that self-check. So that's what we're really encouraging students to do because that could save you a trip coming all the way to the school as well. And if you're not feeling well, really is staying home. We're not talking about seasonal allergies and stuff like that, but we are talking about if you're not feeling well, err on the side of caution and do stay home. And, and also, if you do need to stay home because you're not really sure, you could still join your class. So you can still join the, the class that's jumping in virtually. So there is a way for you to still stay connected. A parent is asking a question around how parents get access to power school. Uh, the counseling center will have to address that with sending out the information. So there are basically codes that they send out. There's ways for parents to directly get on power school. And they will see that that happens. Yes, and to add to that, I just spoke to um, IT today, and they're creating a login package. So 
for families, you'll receive a one page of instructions on how to log into PowerSchool along with your student's user ID and password. And then also how to work, how to navigate in Google Classroom. And the teachers will invite parents and guardians in as a parent and guardian role. So you could see certain things within Google Classroom. So we'll provide you with more detailed information. What is our what is your requirement regarding the level of COVID cases in Franklin County before opening up fully again? Actually, that's not likely to be our call, I'll be honest. Um, right now, the state, the governor said that we're going to remain in hybrid. So we don't have that option. In other words, if the number even remains zero, as far as I know, we would not make that call. Should it change, that would be the superintendent would know more than I with that. But that's a state call to decide whether or not we're allowed to go fully in person. A question about locker use, will we be using them? No, it's just, it's a matter of, I realize it's inconvenient, but for right now it's a matter of health, safety, and it's just so difficult to keep that physical distancing. So for now, no, and when things change, then obviously we'll see that all students are assigned a locker. And, and it looks down. like, uh, excuse me, but it looks like we have about four minutes left, so maybe time for one more question, and then Brad, uh, Brad you can wrap it up. Um, so the last question we're gonna take in this format is, will there be any virtual meetings on Wednesday the 9th? Oh, it's a great question, and no, because we may not have made that clear. So that is for the Chromebook distribution, and we want to make sure that we have as smooth a start as we can. So we understand the handicap, not having the device and being asked to go virtual. So trying to get all the devices in as many hands as we can, and then also acknowledging that there's going to be you know, a, a transition before we can make sure everything is fully underway. Uh, the rest of the questions, there's just a small handful. We will uh, answer through email and something will be sent out because some of them are pretty good. Unless you want to take them now. Right, we'll take a look at the website, try to add those questions with that. It's, it won't be possible to email every, um, every single answer or question. So we'll try to put that in a document or make sure that it's answered in an upcoming document because we do want to make sure all the questions are answered as much as possible and I think, I think I can speak for Lisa. Lisa. We could be more excited to have the students here. And this is the only reason we exist, if you will. In our profession, there is nothing like having the students here. So I realize the next time they see me, both of us will be wearing masks, but we still look forward to seeing students, even if it's largely through their eyes and the movement. And I'm excited to get in the classrooms. Hopefully athletics will open up love going to those, and things like plays. All of that means the world to me. I enjoy it. So I'm excited to get started. As well, here at the Northwest Career and Technical Center, we are so excited to meet our new students and have our, have our students return to us because we have some exciting surprises for you, and I'm not going to share those tonight, but you will see when you start with us. So thank you very much. Thanks for coming tonight virtually, and look forward to seeing everyone soon.